While the ENF Super Hornet represents an evolutionary upgrade, how it is designed and built is quite revolutionary. The application of design for manufacturing and assembly and new manufacturing technologies such as high-speed machining have simplified construction and led to remarkable gains in making the airplane more affordable. High-speed machine parts are milled to closer tolerances and fit together better. Entire assemblies are now machined from a single piece of material. That means fewer parts, fewer holes, fewer fasteners, and fewer opportunities for error. For example, even though the ENF's wing is 25% bigger than the C&D's, it contains 30% fewer parts. And before high-speed machining, this one-piece bulkhead was assembled from 90 different parts. In fact, the entire fuselage is assembled in a dramatically new way called low-rate expandable tooling. Kent Barron is director of manufacturing for the Harnet program. Low-rate expandable tooling, a uh, new concept uh, for the ENF. Uh, there's several reasons we went to it. Uh, the ENF does have low rates. Uh, right now we build one every six weeks. Uh, peak rate will probably be uh, six a month. Uh, so uh, the, the rates are low. Uh, the other thing is that on the new technical fighters, the mole line fidelity of the aircraft is very, very critical. Uh, if you would look at the CND line, there's uh, approximately 22 sub-assemblies uh, that are built up and they go into a major splice jig. Uh, in all, all, although all the sub-assemblies are the blueprint, uh, they, they sometimes have difficulty fitting into a splice jig because of the engineering tolerances allowables, uh, one part being on the high side and the other being on the low side. The low rate uh, expandable tooling concept has done away with that. We have one tool where the entire forward fuselage structure is assembled. Uh, when it leaves that tool, it's, uh, it's, it's a one-piece airplane, and uh, it does, you don't have sub-assemblies. Uh, that has certainly improved the quality of the hardware we're building and enhanced the mole line fidelity of the aircraft, that being the outer smoothness of the aircraft, which is critical to the uh, new tactical aircraft, uh, such as the ENF. While the ENF program is moving along very smoothly, on schedule, on cost, and underweight, there's a bump in the road ahead. Mike Sears explains. This program, unlike previous programs, stops building airplanes after the first 10 test articles, seven of which fly and three of which for ground tests. And there's 22 to 24 months between delivery of that 10th one and delivery of the first production airplane. The, the time off is, is a very, very tricky issue for all of us. Not just for McDonnell Douglas, but for all of our suppliers in terms of maintaining what you've developed and what you know over into building this, that, that, that first production airplane. We're, we're putting some very detailed plans together to increase our probability of success coming out of that gap and going into the production phase. For obvious reasons, the new Super Hornet has captured a lot of attention. But Jerry Daniels, the ENF's program manager, cautions against forgetting the importance of the FNA-18 C&D program. From a pure technical standpoint, we could have never done the ENF program without the solid technical database we had on the C&D. And as a consequence, we did ENF development for a fraction of the time and cost that it would have taken otherwise. But now we're at that turning point of a program. We're making commitments to our customer, we're making promises, and probably the best measure the customer has as to how well he can accept those promises is how well we perform in the CD program. So if anything, the CD line is more important to us than ever. We can't go around claiming we're going to have uh, breakthroughs in, uh, in affordability, breakthroughs in quality, if we're not demonstrating those things with the exact same workforce, same factories involved, and everything else on the CD line. So constantly improving our performance on CD is critical to how ENF will be viewed and determine to a large degree how, uh, how many of these aircraft our customer wants to buy. We're very proud of our successes. The, the program has remained on schedule and on budget uh, almost from its inception. We're very proud of that. Uh, that has not reduced the scrutiny. If anything, the environment in Washington with continual pressures on the budget uh, makes major programs like this, uh, puts, puts them under more scrutiny than ever before we should expect to operate that way and be able to perform in that environment. And I'm, I'm really proud of the people out there that have, uh, that have done it to date because they have performed that way. I think we'll see the first 
uh, F-18EFs going to sea, going on cruise on an American aircraft carrier in 2001. I think we'll see F-18EFs flying for over 40 years. I think there are young people in St. Louis today building this airplane whose children's children will be building F-18EFs, our follow-on variants. We've got an awful lot of work ahead of us. It's critically important to the company and to the Navy because as this airplane program goes, so goes naval aviation.